Over a year since I began development, my ludicrously fast firing nerf gun is finally complete. Not perfected, but I digress. If you have not seen parts 1 and 2 yet, start there, trust me. Since the last video, I've made improvements to loading, use, reliability, speed, and most importantly, I put it all in a pretty shell. But I'll get to all that. First things first, let's throw out parts that worked perfectly fine and redesign them, starting with the belt drives, because I wanted them to be about 10mm shorter, and plan A failed. A small change that will lead to some big issues. Now to be clear, I did not need to do this, but sometimes you need to throw everything out to needlessly optimize a design, and perhaps I wanted to play with my mini blowtorch a little more. As I'll soon discover though, re-engineering perfectly working parts is not always a great idea. You learn something new every day, which is easier than ever to do with Brilliant, the sponsor of today's video. Brilliant is where you learn by doing, with thousands of interactive lessons in math, data analysis, programming, and AI. It's not just about absorbing information, it's about truly understanding and applying it. Brilliant uses a first principles approach packed with hands-on problem solving, making it six times more effective than just watching lectures. Their award-winning content is crafted by experts from MIT, Caltech, Microsoft, Google, and more. Brilliant helps you build critical thinking skills through problem solving, not memorization. These skills are invaluable when troubleshooting the myriad of issues I face in my projects. Learning a little every day is crucial for growth, and Brilliant makes it easy with fun lessons you can do anytime. I've really been enjoying their data science courses, particularly predicting with probability. Perfect for building a foundation in data science using actual air traffic data to predict outcomes, no coding skills required. You'll learn about concepts from Bayes' theorem to multiple linear regression, to wrangle data sets, compare distributions, visualize data, and answer questions like which airline is least likely to have a delay due to weather. Data skills are essential for the modern world, and Brilliant is the best way to get them. You can try everything Brilliant has to offer for free for a full 30 days. Visit brilliant.org slash 3D printed life, or click the link in the description. You'll also get 20% off an annual premium subscription. Thank you Brilliant for sponsoring this portion of the video. Where were we? Ah uh, yes, belt no worky. I learned previously that the angle and spacing of belt drives is quite sensitive. I played around with this some more, trying different configurations and angles, but for whatever reason, nothing was reliable. So I just removed the area that the darts were jamming against, added some more bearings to that top plate, and now it works fine. Next problem, I need more speed, dart speed. No, this is not really necessary, but people seem to want it, so here we are. And despite this being a rather simple addition, it took weeks to get it working. Why? Because these stupid things love to catch on fire. Never managed to get it on camera though. And even when they did work, their behavior was funky. I even broke out my logic analyzer to check the signal lines. And there was certainly some weird voodoo going on, so maybe I'll just upgrade my ESC. This new driver has some nice new features like proper overcurrent protection. And this. and now everything's gonna work perfectly. Except it didn't. This is where the bad blood began, because it couldn't possibly be my MUB's fault, but it was, and I only fried like 18 ESCs before figuring that out. The MUB was my COVID project, a tiny all-in-one modular processor board, but there was a blank space in my firmware, because doing it properly takes a lot of time, and timers. So rather than sink more time into a side project of a side project, it's time for me to move on. Welcome to the ring, Teensy. Faster, smarter, but less OI and a bit bigger, but still a huge improvement. It's time to just shake it off and move on. Now that I'm through integration hell, part one, I have a working dual stage dart flinger. These darts are flying significantly faster than the single stage system. Now to just check one thing. Ah yes, perfect. If you look closely and we step frame by frame, you can see that that second stage is giving a slight spin on the darts. This should help improve accuracy, which really doesn't matter at all when you're flinging over 100 darts in a second, but whatever. Then I was able to install the core onto my new backplate, provided by PCBWay. If you didn't already know, PCBWay doesn't just produce PCBs, they can also do laser cutting, machining, 3D printing, and more. And they were happy to provide me with this beautiful new anodized aluminum backplate and 3D printed shell. Next I attached the brand new trigger body, where I needlessly changed the motor mount to reduce part count. But also I made it more chonky for one-handed wielding. I definitely didn't mess up that motor plate multiple times. Then I found that the new belt tension was so bad that it didn't even work. And also the mag release, which wasn't working either. I'm just gonna come back to this. Hey, look, a new mag! 
At first glance, it looks the same. At second glance, it still looks the same. But at third glance, it's totally different. The old design worked pretty fine, but the integrated bearings added complexity to this technically consumable part, so I moved those over to the body of the gun itself. The bigger issue was loading. The old process was difficult and tedious, it took 5 minutes best case. So I made the top of the mag removable. This lets you place the darts in much more easily. But these preloaders are really annoying to keep out of the way. Wouldn't it be nice if they just... Oh, would well, you look at that? It's almost like somebody actually designed this properly. The mechanism to achieve this looks really nice as well. It's a shame it's hidden. I tried to do a print-in-place design, uh, but decided against that after a single failure. So <laughs> the operation of it is very simple though. The spring-loaded fingers catch the mag preloaders at the bottom of travel, allowing you to load the darts. Then when you put the mag cover back on, these crazy little spiky fingers will push the catches aside for each preloader and release them. How well does it work? Well, loading darts has gone from over 5 minutes to just about 2 minutes, and that is a huge improvement. Now to attach the mag. Oh, right. Guess I should address this now. First things first, that mag release which is also using a pretty clever design. I'm using a servo to push a wedge up and down, which can push the mag drive back and forth. This allows you to insert and remove the magazine. Then, when the wedge is not in use, it moves far enough out of the way that it makes absolutely no contact with the spinning bit. Problem is, my servo needs more torque. A bigger servo would fix this, but after consulting with some experts, I found a better solution. Alright, next up, the loose belts. I could have adjusted spacing between the motor and mag drive, but that would be admitting I messed up, so instead I bought the new correct size belts. But these were way too tight, so I adjusted the spacing and reprinted the handle and somehow messed it up again. Thankfully I anticipated this failure, so I added a bit of threaded inserts and designed a little bearing holder which would take up the slack. All better. The last sub-assembly to tackle is the mag guide. This is the piece that enables the dart advancers to push the darts out of the bag. Nothing really changed here other than the color. I reprinted a lot of parts just for the color, but we're in the final countdown now. Let's put it all together. This mess of wires and components is the unfortunate side effect of not designing a custom PCB for this project. I also tried using an external power supply to drive the Teensy, but somehow that ended up frying it. I suspect I have some sort of malicious ground loop or something going on, but that's above my pay grade to debug. So I came up with a foolproof solution. Test time. The first tests are again using a single mag chamber to keep things easy, but that does not mean success. Like, so let's ignore that. Oh, well, maybe not. Seems like my belt drives are locking up. I suspect the belts were expanding a bit too much and rubbing here, causing them to go their own way. Uh, so I reprinted a bunch of parts piece by piece and remade one of the belts. I also added threads to the barrel to make installation a bit easier, which gives the option for swapping out barrels for an even longer one should you desire. Anyway, it's finally working. Why did I need to redesign half the project? Alright, test two. Okay, but actually before that I need to do something about this sketchy wiring. You know what, I'll just rewire everything. Never learn, do I? These DuPont connectors really do suck though. Alright, finally it's time to test. Oh, but wait, one of those connectors just failed. Okay, and besides the fact that the solenoid is now not working, everything else seems to be. Hooray. And after fixing that solenoid issue, which was totally not my fault at all, we can try to take it to the limit one more time. Will it break my record? Let's find out. I was only able to reliably hit a drum velocity of 25 per second before it failed. Now I know from previous testing that the mirrored mag design worked a bit better, so I'll quickly reprint all those parts on my Bamboo X1 Carbon, which I have an affiliate link for by the way, it's an awesome printer, and after building up the new mag, which is looking real nice in that new color scheme, it's back to testing. Also, I mounted the display and controls so that I can adjust the fire rate without needing to re-upload code. So I started off with some dry fire testing at 10 rounds per second, 20, 30, 40, 50, and finally 100. Despite being surprisingly loud, everything seems to be in order here, and I captured a really great view of that ramp actuation which controls when darts are fired. So let's fully load up a mag and start off easy at 10 per second. Oh no, guess which problem is back. Alright, I have a new design which should solve this once and for all. So while I waited for that to print, let's check out that display and controls. It's pretty basic, but it does let me adjust the fire rate and quantity of darts to fire on the fly, which has been super convenient. And also I added a dart tracking feature to count how many rounds are left. 
Nothing crazy, but gets the job done. I originally intended on using these scroll knobs, but oh my god, these things are so noisy that they're borderline unusable. So I'm just gonna plug up that spot where I originally planned to mount them, and nobody's the wiser. It has a name now, by the way. Woohoo! Now, finally time to test that new bearing plate. Well, it's still jamming. But on the bright side, this shot captured two of my issues. First, darts occasionally don't fully preload from the Mac. That's an easy fix with some tweaks to dimensions on the dart loader. Second though, is that the dart tips seem to get bent back, starting on this first bearing. This issue was a bit more perplexing, so I printed a bare bones bearing plate to hopefully see what's going on a little better. And other than burning out a flywheel motor and nearly treading a dart to dust, this test was actually super helpful. You can see the dart tips are in fact getting bent up and back every so often. Perhaps my belt drives are running just a bit too fast. So I slowed it down, took it easy, and ran the next test. Alright, I don't know why I thought this would work with a dead flywheel motor, so uh, I'm just going to run without the flywheel stage until my new motors arrive. I added this little block to help guide the darts through that big empty space, and then gave it another go. Womp. Better, but still jamming. I have one last idea. Redoing the belt spacing and speed to perhaps stop the jamming once and for all. The first test at 20 darts a second went quietly, but flawlessly. So I reloaded it and tried out the burst fire mode, which was working great. Even upping the fire rate to 60 darts a second yielded no issues. Things are finally looking good. And my new motors arrived. So I reinstalled those into the second stage and let it rip. Oh, we're back. And that was only at 50 per second. And not the full mag because I didn't want to spend 20 minutes hunting darts. Now let's get back to 100 a second. Nope. Still nope. Nope in slow motion. Okay, I'll come back to this. I'm not giving up, but every failure shreds darts and I'm running very low. Let's get another test in at 50 per second, this time in slow motion. Since half speed is working so reliably, I threw the shell on to give it a proper full test. Everything is working great. The adjustable fire modes and speeds are amazing. Now for the slow-mo fun. And surprisingly, the darts are kind of going all over the place. My new flywheel motors are a bit slower because they came quicker. Uh, maybe they're just not enough, or maybe my core needs tweaking. I'll come back to those ideas in a minute. For now, I'm going to get back to top speed testing. 100 per second, once again jammed up, but at least one dart came out this time. And turning the speed down to 70 a second was working great until the battery got too low. So while I recharged the battery, I also reprinted the core and I swapped the belt drive motors with the flywheel motors. Perhaps a slightly tighter gap between the belt drives is just what I need. And it was at this point that I captured the shot you saw at the start of this video but not before a rather dramatic failure due to, well, me being lazy and not putting in all the bearing plate screws. Yes, it was actually smoking. And here's 50 per second in slow motion again. Some darts are still coming out a bit wonky, but at least they're flying a lot faster now. Next up, 80 per second. Now, as a disclaimer, or perhaps an excuse, I am totally out of fresh darts at this point, which does make a very big difference. So it's totally possible these jams are due to damaged darts. But unfortunately, I'm running out of time and new darts would take too long to arrive. So to finish off this project, I'll give 100 per second one more good shot. I removed the shell and sorted through my darts to find the least damaged ones. Oh, really close. Okay, so about 10 darts came through before jamming. Maybe a slow-mo shot will reveal something? Well, sort of. 
Even though it's slowed down 15 times, it's still moving really fast. I do have one last trick up my sleeve. Cleaning the belts with isopropyl alcohol and increasing their speed once firing starts may be just enough. And oh my god, it's finally working at full speed. I'm very happy to say my 100 dart per second nerf gun is now fully complete. It may have only fired about 50 darts, but that's literally all I have left from my box of 200. It has been an insane journey, but I'm very glad to be moving on to other projects now. If you would like to try building this for yourself, you don't, but the project files are linked in the description below. Thank you again to my Patreons and YouTube channel members for your continued support, and thank you Brilliant and PCBWay for sponsoring portions of this video. Links to their sites are in the description below. Until next time.